Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at a comprehensive example that deals with earnings per share or EPS for short. Let's take a look at our liabilities. We have a notes payable that's not converted, which is 14%, which is really not relevant for us. We have an 8% convertible bond. This is a dilutive security, $2.5 million. We have a 10% convertible, another bond of 2.5 million. So those two securities are convertible, which are dilutive. It means they are relevant to our to our problem. We also have under the equity section of the balance sheet, we have a 10% notice cumulative. Cumulative means we have to deduct the preferred dividend, whether declared or not, when we calc compute earnings per share. It's also convertible preferred stock. It's a convertible preferred stock. We have common stock, uh, 1.5 million shares authorized, 500 million shares outstanding. We have additional paid in capital and we have retained earnings. So this is what our balance sheet looks like. So we are mostly concerned with the dilutive securities and the dilutive securities. Let's identify them one more time. Let me highlight the dilutive securities. Those three securities are dilutive. Okay. Now, what else do we have? And in addition to those three securities, we have options that were granted in July. So options are also dilutive securities to purchase 50,000 shares of common stock at a price of 20. The average price for Webster common stock, which is the company for 2017 was $30. Well, guess what? Those options most probably will be dilutive. All options are still outstanding. So here's another dilutive security. So we have a fourth one, options. Let's take a look at number two. What, what additional information are we giving? Both the eight and the 10% convertible bond were issued in 2016 at face value. So look at the balance sheet. This was in 2017. So those were outstanding as of the beginning of the year. Each convertible into 40 shares of common stock. Each bond has a face value of 1,000. That's fine. The 10% cumulative convertible preferred was issued at the beginning of 2017. So it's available for the whole year, made our life much easier. Each preferred is convertible into four shares. So each common stock is converted into four shares. The average income tax rate is 40%. The 500,000 shares of common stock were outstanding the entire year. Good, that's, that's make our life easier for the denominator. Preferred dividend were not declared. It doesn't matter whether declared or not. Remember, they were cumulative. Therefore, we have to deduct them. Net income was 1,750,000. No bonds or preferred were converted. Excellent. So this is the setup. So what do we need to do first? Well, in any, in any earnings per share problem, the first thing you have to compute is basic earnings per share, whether you have a cap, simple or, or a complex capital structure. So the first thing we're going to do is compute earnings per share for the simple capital structure. Simple capital structure means you don't take into account the dilutive securities. How do you compute earnings per share? Simply put, it's net income minus the preferred dividend divided by the average weighted average number of shares. And we have the information for all of this. We have net income. We are giving net income at 1,750,000. So net income 1,750,000 minus the preferred dividend. We know that we have a preferred dividend. Let's go back and see if we if we know how to compute the preferred dividend. So let's focus here on the preferred dividend. We have 2.5 million of preferred dividend and they're paying 10% times 10%. That's going to give us 250,000 of preferred dividend. Therefore, if we take net income minus 250,000, that's going to give us 1.5 million divided by, we said the, the average number of shares is half a million. So basically, basically what it boils down to 1.5 million divided by 500,000, that's going to give us a $3 basic earnings per share. So the basic earnings per share is $3. Pretty straightforward. So we know the numerator and we know the denominator. Okay. So the numerator was 1.5 million, the, domin the denominator was half a million, the weighted average number of shares outstanding, therefore earnings per share is $3. Now the next thing we have to compute is the diluted earnings per share. And what makes this problem interesting is you have more than one security. Therefore what you have to do is you have to follow the following steps. First, you have to determine each dilutive security. So first step, step one, per share, effect assume an exercise or conversion so first we have to find out what is the each dilutive security effect then we have to rank the results in step one so after we compute step one and we have we believe we have four securities if you remember we had two bonds one preferred stock that's convertible and one option 
So we have four different securities. And for each one of them, we have to compute step one for them. Then we're going to rank the results from the smallest to the highest that has the largest effect on earnings effect per share. Then after we do so, we're going to beginning with earnings per share, which is based upon the weighted average, which is the $3, the basic earning. Then we're going to recalculate earnings per share by adding the smallest per share effect from step two. We'll start with the smallest effect. That's why we need to perform step two. Then continue the process as long as the recalculation per share is smaller than the previous amount. Then we keep on recomputing the diluted earnings per share as long as earnings per share is going down. So let's go ahead and start with the first step. So the first step, remember, we have to compute the first first step four times. Why four times? We have four, four, four securities, four securities that we have to take care of. This security, the 8% bond, the 10% bond, the preferred stock, and the option. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start, and let's go ahead and start with the first computation with step one. So first is to look at the, uh, determine the uh, per share effect for both, for each potentially diluted security. So we're going to start with the option. Okay, remember what we have for the option. We have 50,000 options. We have 50,000 options. Assuming if they are exercised, assuming those options are exercised, the company would receive $20 per share because that's the exercise price. Therefore, the company would receive a million dollars as a result of exercising those options because the employees, the executives that, that exercise their option will have to pay the company $20. And if they exercise all 50,000 options, the company would receive a million dollars in cash. Now, the treasury method, we're using the treasury method for the stock options. The treasury method assume you're going to go out there and buy the stocks. Therefore, you're going to take the million dollar the company will take the million dollar and will buy the stock. Now, how did we how did we determine it's thirty dollars? If you look at the problem, they told you the average price per share for the year was thirty dollars. The average price per share. So we assume we bought them throughout the year. Okay. So let's go back here. It means the company will use this money to buy back thirty three thousand three hundred and thirty three shares. Well, if the company is issuing fifty thousand shares and they're buying back. 33,333, it means the incremental increase of the number of shares is 16,667. So the denominator, our denominator will increase by 16,667. What about the numerator? Well, the numerator, there's no effect on the numerator. So remember, there's no incremental numerator effect when it comes to when it comes to stock options. Why? Because when the company issue the stock options, they will debit cash. They will credit common stock, they will credit APIC, and they will credit stock option, the stock option, they will, I'm sorry, they will debit the stock option account, they will debit the stock option. Simply put, when the company issue the stocks, there is no effect on net income. So this entry does not involve net income when they issue the stocks. Therefore, net income is not affected assuming an exercise happens. So what happened, the numerator will go I'm sorry, the denominator will have more shares, but the numerator will not change. Therefore, if we take zero divided by this, so this is what we call the per share effect is zero. So this is when we're trying to rank them, and this is the first step. So we're done with the option. We figure out the ranking is zero. Basically, the, the net effect is zero. Let's take a look at the second security, and the second security that we're going to be working with is the 8% bond. We're going to be using the F converted method. So let's go back and look at the 8% bond. All right, so we're dealing with this bond right here. So let's take a look at this. So the 8% bond, the first thing is we compute is the amount of interest. So it's an 8% bond and it's 2.5 million, the amount of the bond. So let's compute the interest amount. So this bond pays, it's 2 million, 2.5 million, and the bond pays 8%. So the interest component, the interest component is... 200,000. Now this is the interest expense. Okay. Now, yes, we're going to eliminate the interest expense. However, remember, by eliminating the interest expense, our taxes will go up. Therefore, the numerator will be increased only by the net taxes. Simply put, what's, what's going to happen is this. We eliminated 200,000 of expenses, but since we eliminated that, we lost 200,000 times 40% of tax saving, we lost tax savings of 50, of 80,000, of 80,000. So what is our net savings? Well, if this was the, uh, if, if this was the savings, 
the 200,000, then we lost 100, we lost 80,000 on the taxes. So the net effect is 120,000. So the net savings, okay, the net savings by exercising the bond, by, I'm sorry, not exercising, converting the bond is 120,000. Yes, you saved 200,000 in interest, but you lost 80,000 in taxes. In other words, you have to pay more in taxes because you lost a deduction. So, therefore, the shortcut is to take 200,000 times 1 minus 0.4, which will give us 120,000. This is the shortcut. 1 minus the tax rate will give you the tax saving. So simply put, what's going to happen is this. In the numerator, we're going to add 120,000 to the, to, the to the basic earnings per share. Now, each each bond is converted into 40 shares of common stock. How many bonds do we have? Let's go back to the problem. Uh, we oh, so it's we have uh, it's each bond is a thousand dollar bond. Therefore, it's if we have 2.8 million in bonds. Let's go back here. So we have 2.5 million in bonds, and each bond is a thousand dollar bond. Therefore, what we have is we have 2,500 bonds. Okay, and each is converted into 40 shares of stocks. It means we're going to add to the denominator, if my math is right, should be 100,000 shares. 100,000 shares. Well, what's the per share effect? The per share effect is $1.20. So this is the per share effect. This is for the ranking purposes. Let's go back to the slide it's here. So this is the basic. This was zero, the ranking was zero for the option. And for the first step, the ranking was $1.20 for the 8% bond. For the 8% bond, the ranking was $1.20. Let's take a look for the other bond, which is the 10% bond. Well, the 10% bond, let's do it here. That, oops, the 10% bond, it's 2.5 million times, it pays 10% interest. Therefore, the interest expense is 250,000. Now remember, Yes, we're going to save on interest expense, but we're going to lose the tax effect. Therefore, if we take 2.5 million times 1 minus the tax rate, 1 minus 0.4, which would give us 0.6 times, which will give us uh, 150,000. So base, simply put, the taxes were 40%. So if we multiply this by 40%, the tax is 100,000. This is the tax. Therefore, the savings is 250 minus 100,000 so the net saving is the net saving is 150 therefore in the numerator we're going to add 150,000 which is the interest expense net of tax interest expense net of tax and we have 2500 bonds and each bond is converted into 40 stocks therefore we're going to add to the numerator 100,000 100,000 shares therefore this is 1.5 so this is the ranking of this Okay, so once again, we compute the interest, then the taxes is 100,000, the interest expense net of tax is 150, that's the numerator, then the denominator is 2,500 bonds, each converted into 40 shares of stocks, we add the, uh, we add to the denominator 100,000. So the ranking of this bond is $1.50. And the third security, what else did we have? We have, this is the, this is the, oh, this is the 10%. This is the 10% converted. What else do we have? Uh, the 10%. We said, we said we have four securities. And the last one is we did one. This is one. This is the first one. This is the second 8%. Oh, we still have the, the convertible preferred stock. That's right. Uh, the convert the 10% convertible preferred stock okay so remember uh, well not remember if you don't know this what's gonna happen is this what is the effect on the numerator and the denominator well what's gonna happen is this if the preferred stocks are converted okay we have preferred stock of how much let's go back here we have 2.5 million of preferred stock and the 2.5 million they pay 10% so 250,000 so generally not generally speaking the preferred stock pays 250,000 let's go down here and work this last okay all right so 
the bond, uh, the preferred stock, we have 200 and 2.5 million. They pay 10%. Therefore, they pay a dividend of 250,000. Remember, what's going to happen is this. This is the dividend. Okay. What happened to the numerator? If we convert, then we add to the numerator 250,000 because we put back the dividend. We add to the numerator 250,000. And each stock, we have 225,000 shares of stocks. Why 25,000? Because 2.5 million and the par value was 100. The par value is 100. So if we take 2.5 million divided by 100 par value will give us 25,000 shares of preferred stock. 25,000 each converted into four shares of common stock. We're also going to add to the denominator 100,000. Now remember, the, those 100,000, it's strictly coincident. Don't just add 100,000 to the denominator. What's the per, sh per share earning effect? 2.5. This is for ranking purposes. So we're still working on the first step. And this is the computation. Okay, this is the computation. Now we're going to rank those four different securities with their per share effect from the smallest to the largest. Remember the option had a zero per share effect. Convertible was 1.2, the 8% convertible, the 10% convertible 1.5, and the 10% preferred stock is 2.5. Now we know the ranking. What are we going to do? We're going to start from the lowest to the highest. So we're going to start by looking at the options and see what effect does the option makes if they were converted on the actual earnings per share. Now, we did all this only for the ranking purposes because we have multiple securities. Now we're going to take each security and see the effect of it, starting with the smallest and going down. So first we're going to go with the options, then we're going to go with the 8%, the 10%, and 10%. And we'll keep on com computing this as long as earnings per share is going down, being diluted. So let's start with the first step. So the next step is to determine earning per share, giving the, uh, giving the effect to the ranking. Okay, let's go back to the original equation. The original equation was, the original basic earnings per share was 1.5 million divided by 500,000 shares, which gave us the basic was 3. Okay, now what's going to happen is this. So the basic was 3. So with the options, what's going to happen, no change plus 0, no change to the numerator. When we exercise the options, remember I told you there's no change to the numerator. What's going to happen to the denominator, if you remember, we are going to add, we are going to add 16,667 and six, 16, 16, shares. Well, if we take 1.5 million, divide them by 516,667, it's going to give us 2.9. Okay, well, 2.9 is lower than 3. Therefore, the options are dilutive. And hopefully, you know the options are dilutive because remember, the, uh, the, egg, the, sorry, the exercise was, the, uh, the average price was 30 and the exercise was 20. Of course, they're dilutive, right? Of course, they're dilutive. If they told you on the problem that the average price was 15, then you don't even do this calculation because it's, the options are not dilutive. No one's going to exercise their option, okay? Um, so the exercise, the, the options are dilutive. So since they are dilutive, we're going to move to the second option. So they're dilutive, we'll move to the second. So let's take a look on the for the 8% convertible bond. The 8% convertible bond, we avoided 200,000 gross interest, but net of tax effect times 0.6, what we avoided is of interest 120,000. Simply put, what's going to happen, let's go back to the basic earnings per share. The basic earnings per share was 1.5 million divided by 500,000. That was the basic. Then from the previous security, let me just use a different color. We added 16,667 plus zero for the option. Now for the numerator, I'm going to use a different color. We added to the numerator. Now we're going to add to the num numerator the interest that could be avoided from if we, if we, uh, if we convert this bond, but as a result, we're going to add to the denominator 100,000 shares because those bonds are converted into 100,000 shares. So now we could compute the new earnings, dilutive earnings per share and see if it's dilutive or not. So in the numerator, we have 1,620,000 and in the denominator, we have 616,667. Let me go ahead and compute this to see how much do we come up with. 
we come up with $2.63. Is this dilutive? And the answer is yes, it is dilutive. Why? Because we went from three, the basic, then when we involved the options, it went down to 2.9, and now from 2.9, earnings per share is 2.63 therefore the converting this bond is considered dilutive because our earnings per share is two dollars and sixty three cent two dollar and sixty three cent now we're gonna move on to the next security to the next security and the next security is the ten percent convertible uh the ten percent convertible bond okay remember let's start with the with the previous from the previous slide what what do we have is this we are one million six hundred and twenty and six sixteen sixty seven. So we're gonna so from the previous slide we have one million six hundred and twenty and in the denominator we have six hundred sixteen thousand six sixty seven. Okay? Based on the previous slide. Now what's gonna happen when we convert those the those new securities, the ten percent convertible securities we're going to add to the numerator, we're going to add, let me put it in a different color because now this is a new security. We're going to add to the numerator 150,000. This was the this was the savings net of tax. And in the denominator, we're going to add an additional 100,000 shares if we convert those bonds. If you don't know where these numbers are coming from, we did the computation earlier. Now we have a new computation to make now. So in the numerator, we have 1,770,000. That's the new adjusted income. And in the numerator, we have 700, in the denominator, 716,667. Now, what is our new? It's $2.47. Again, we went from three, the basic, exercising the option brought us to 2.9. Exercising the two, um, the 8% bond brought us to 2.63, and now it's 2.47. So is this dilutive? Yes, it is. So the 10% a convertible bond is dilutive is dilutive and this is the computation okay now we have the last security the last security to uh, the last security to uh, to compute so we're now let's take a look at the last security which is the um, convertible uh, convertible preferred we're going to start as i as i stated with the previous equation which is 1 million seven hundred and seventy thousand divide them by 716,667, okay? So what do we add to the numerator and what do we add to the denominator? With the convertible preferred bond, we are going to avoid paying dividend. And how much was the dividend? The dividend was, the dividend on the convertible, it was, uh, it was 2.5 million times 10%, that's 200 and 250,000. So to the numerator, we're gonna add back let me put it in a different color because so this way you know this is a new security. We're going to add back 250,000 in dividend to the numerator and the denominator. We're going to also add 100,000 as the result of the conversion. Now we have a new numerator and denominator. It's 2,220,000. Divide them by 816,667. And that's going to give us 2.47. Guess what? We started with three dollars basic earnings per share. With the option, we went down to two point two point nine. With the eight percent convertible, we went to two point six three. With the ten percent convertible, we went two point four seven, and they were all dilutive. And with this one, we are at two point four seven. It did not dilute. Therefore, what we would say, we would say that the that 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 this security is not dilutive because it did not bring the it did not bring the earnings per share any lower at this point we stop because anything else is not going to bring it any lower simply put for this exercise the basic earnings per share is three dollars the diluted earnings per share is two dollar and 47 this is the basically the bottom line for this exercise we know the diluted and we know the basic earnings per share so hopefully this exercise it's a good exercise because it have many securities hopefully you learn how to compute this um, if you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. It's worth it. I'm not sure if they will give you something like this on the exam. Uh, could be a simulation. Who knows? I'm not going to rule it out. I can't rule it out. But uh, I highly doubt it. It will be a multiple choice question. Uh, you will need a lot of time to solve it, but it could be a simulation. Uh, good luck and stay motivated.